everybody. Um, I filmed two videos already. I haven't even edited them yet. And I'm going to film a second one. A third one. Um, this is going to be a tutorial um, for making scrapbooks um, with books. Um, I don't think I've seen this online yet. Um, not that I've extensively searched for it, but I figured a tutorial would be kind of cool because my first few books, my first book that I made um, was out of old, uh, uh, you know, uh, schedules and little convention books and little like instruction books. Um, so I'm going to make, I'm um, planning on making a big one to um, keep track of totems. Um, so I have most of the pieces together, so I'm going to show you how to make a book like this. So this one I'm just using as, as uh, using extra paint for now. But I, I super like it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it after, but, so yeah. So this one's going to be the hugest book ever. So I just, uh, this is a cereal box, pretty large cereal box. I don't know if you can see that on camera. There's little stars everywhere with sparkles. So I just painted a cereal box. I like sparkles. I like blue and turquoise and green. I like cool colors. So you need your cover. And I got a bunch of books. Um, three of these are uh, old convention books from furry cons, which uh, furry cons are like the happiest place on the planet. It's like being a little kid again, and it's just a lot of fun. Don't knock it to your child. Um, so if you have convention books and you're like me and you can't, you know, bear to part with them, but they're just sitting around collecting dust, good, good way to use them up. And um, these are just like, you know, you go to a truck stop and something and they have like all these... Uh, tourism stuff, they're free. So if you're broke like me and want to start junk journaling or art journaling, you go free books, cereal box, string from home, dental floss. You know, you, you can make one of these like super duper cheap. So I actually had tried binding these together. This is like my first attempt. I tried binding these together uh, in an old um, folder, which I prettied up. They're pretty good. So like one fit, <laughs> and it was super awesome. And I thought it was going to be awesome, but when I bound three together, they did not fit. I don't know if you see that. So I took it all apart because um, I bound these three things together, and I was going to bind them in here before I saw any tutorials or anything. It was a mess. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that because it's all decorated and pretty and sparkly. So these, um, basically, what I went and did is I glued three pages together, and maybe gluing three pages together was a bit much. And even then, at first, I had like really cheap dollar store white glue, and that's what I was using. And yeah, sometimes you don't get the pages don't all stick together, so you just go through and glue them up some more. So if you want to be nitpicky, but I'm not, uh, I might do that as I go. So I just go through and glue two or three pages together. I would recommend starting from the center and working your way to each cover, as on one of them it didn't work out evenly, and so like it's a bit lopsided, and that's if you want to be a perfectionist. You certainly don't have to. And then on a few of them, um, like on this one, these ones are all shiny, I just went and did some gesso over top. And if you don't have gesso, you could probably just do white paint. Um, I, I just started doing it. I didn't finish it. So these ones, I think, I only glued two pages together because it was a heavier weight paper. And it's kind of sad to be covering up all this beautiful artwork. But uh, I just find it kind of funny that I'm going to do animal totems on furry con books. <laughs> and so yeah, here's another one. These ones I glued three pages together, and it's probably a bit overkill by the time I put gesso or paint. So this one's two, and it's probably two versus three to make it work for the center. So, you can go and do that. These ones I haven't done that, so I'll probably do it after the fact. 
Um, this one did have a map in the middle, which I pulled out. And it, like the staple's a bit wonky. So once it's bound, I'm almost tempted to take the staple out. I tried flattening it down with the uh, pliers, but I would need like super duper long pliers. So, measuring stuff is not my forte. And uh, I kind of, I think I saw it on Sugar's channel. She just kind of grabs a piece of paper and measures everything up. Um, one thing to take notice when you are uh, going to mark your page, I don't know, is to be aware, and it's going to be difficult when you're using different books or different things, so to take note where the staples are. Like this one, I was just, just off the staple, so like you can't put a hole through where there's a staple unless you pull the staple out. And since I already have these, I'm just going to measure one book up to the other, hopefully. So I'm just going to put a mark where each notch is. So yeah, like I to make it all even, like I would take a piece of cardboard the length of this and figure out where I'd want the holes. Um, I seem to like going with an odd number, I'm not sure why. I'm, I'm like noob at this, I've only been doing art journaling for like four months. <laughs> Um, so yeah, don't take my word over another artist who's been doing it longer. So yeah, I just mark where all the things are with a marker. And then, which is a bit hard for me because my hands are kind of crappy, I just cut triangles. And it looks super ugly and it's not precise, but it'll work. It's a junk journal anyways, it doesn't really matter. So I just do that. So yeah, I'm pretty new to junk journaling. How I came across it, um, I got chicken pox at the beginning of May. Um, actually, it was I think it started being symptomatic mid-April and I just was, I guess, trying to fight it and broke out in a rash and it went away and then I went to a convention in Ottawa with my friends. I went to Ottawa Comic Con to help her vend and um, uh, it, it just, after Comic Con I was just full blown chicken pox. And let me tell you, chicken pox when you're in your 30s is pure hell. <laughs> pure, pure hell. I was very, like, I was bedridden for at least a week. I couldn't move, I couldn't walk. Um, so all I had, all I could do was sleep and watch YouTube. <laughs> so I found, I forget where I, the first, I forget what, I think I found art journaling first and it was very cool, but, um, the problem with the art journaling is they all have all these really fancy tools and, um, I'm really broke. I'm, um, uh, I have chronic pain due to a, t a TFCC tear is the thing. So basically, I have uh, a hole in the cartilage in my wrist from when I was a professional cook. I must have done something to hurt it. And uh, yeah, I'm waiting for surgery to fix that. But I'm unable to kind of work a regular job. I'm um, not like, able to do my career anymore, that's for sure. And uh, so now I'm a security guard part-time. <laughs> and when I work full 40-hour weeks or 30-hour weeks, I'm too exhausted to do anything at home. Um, but when I work fewer hours, then I can do stuff. So, it's all a big balancing act. So yeah, I got... Um, I don't have, uh, oh, geez, tangent, all that to say that I was broke because <laughs> I don't work full time and uh, I can't buy all the fancy tools. So then I found junk journaling um, and some of you ladies do like, I, I, I don't even know if it can be called junk anymore at that point. Like I'm, I'm on some groups on Facebook and stuff and like each thing is like a work of art. It's insane. Um, but I found a YouTuber named Sugar. Hi Sugar! If ever she watches this, it'd be really awesome. Um, and she, she works mostly with junk. And it's really cool. And so a lot of my inspiration and a lot of my learnings come from Sugar's channel. Um, 
So I don't know tutorial wise if I'll ever have very many, but if you just like to watch somebody craft and listen to them drone on about their crazy life, then maybe you'll like my channel. I'm going to give it a go anyways. Um, so yeah. So now that I've notched them all up, so now they're all, all these are ready to go. I need to work on the cover. Now I have to figure out what side I want as the outside. I guess this will be my outside, and this will be my front cover. This side's pretty cool too, but I think this will be my inside. So I've got five. Now I see, do I have a ruler? Let me have a ruler. Okay. Um, a ruler. There is no ruler in here. Oh, there's one. Okay. Pardon me for reaching in front of the camera. A lot of the supplies that you see is stuff I've had since I was a kid, or that I got in college when I was in my twenties, or shamelessly borrowed from my boyfriend, who has like all kinds of crafting stuff. And uh, now that I've I've been working a lot of hours recently, so every paycheck I go to the dollar store. There's like a really crazy dollar store, and uh, the nearest town is like, uh, well, there's a town nearby with kind of a dollar store, but the nearest big city is like 48 kilometers away. <laughs> so I go there and I go to the crazy dollar store and I get cheap craft stuff. <laughs> Which is working for me. And that's that's my spoilage. So, I work in centimeters. It's seven and a half centimeters. Oh, the whole thing is in centimeters. Okay, so it's seven and a half centimeters. So let's say seven. I can't fit six. Hmm. Centimeter apart. I was like, one of my ideas if I could fit six was to stick this in the back. So if I collected stuff or found stuff, I could just toss it in here and save it. Yeah, I got this cute craft tape at the dollar store, but it doesn't like sticking, so I have to glue it all down. So I'm actually, maybe... Alrighty. So... <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to... I'll take a cool purple color. I already used purple. I'll use turquoise. I keep using the same pieces and using different colors. I guess I'll try to do this facing you guys. I apologize, I'm not used to filming like this. I have another YouTube channel that I haven't updated in forever um, for camping cooking, and it's really cool because my boyfriend usually films for me. He plays the role of cameraman, but uh, he's not going to cameraman for like an hour while I craft. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to try this frequency to... Three, four, five. I can fit seven. No, 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 no. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And they're not going to be even. I guess that one. But that's okay. So this is going to be the inside. The thing I have learned the hard way. You want to work on the outside so that you punch your holes in. So, I don't know if you can see it. Well, you don't really see it so much anymore, but I poke them out and you get like these raw edges and it's not so pretty. I think I did it with this one too. Yeah, see? Raw edges. So, I forget which one I did. Oh, no, okay. The one that I made for my friend, I punched going in. And uh, it doesn't show as badly. I already gave it away, so I can't show you. I'm just going to place it in there, and I'm not going to be precise. Oh, I had a... maybe a little bit precise. There's probably a better way to do this. <laughs> probably. So I'm just marking them. where the notches line up. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Sharpen my pencil again. So there's a line. We got two more lines to do. Alright. So, 
Now with my other one, I just do crosses to the lines that I made. I don't know if you can see with my big old arm. I don't even know if my head's landing in the frame, <laughs> to which I apologize. Okay, so I just do that. So now I'll know where I need to poke all my things. Which brings me to the next part. I, I kind of just wing all of this. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I've gotten books and they hold together and I can art to them, so I guess that's all I really need. <laughs> so yeah, I started up the crafting. Um, it helps distract me from my chronic pain, which is really awesome. And usually doesn't hurt too bad. It's my left wrist that's the worst, although my right wrist can get wonky too. Um, so yeah, it distracts me from the pain, and it's been helping with my depression, which is really awesome. And I get to just play with art supplies. There's no stress. If I just want to like paint colors on cards, I can paint colors on cards. I did that one night. I, all I did was just paint colors. <laughs> on cards and I felt freaking fantastic doing it so yeah I'll they're just like junk mail stuff so I'll eventually I'll cut them up and I'll make journaling cards out of them and that's all I did one night I just painted colors and I was super happy doing it so I don't know if you can see especially with all the shine so I got all my pokey holes marked and to help this along I usually grab my roll of tape <coughs> And some knitting needles. I wish I had like a little awl, that would have been like super duper awesome, but I don't have that. So I place the poke site over the whole of this, just so I have something, and I just, with the knitting needle. Knitting needle, sorry. And then I usually go through with a bigger one just to make the hole a bit bigger. And I just go ahead and do all that. Be careful not to kill yourself. So I'm just gonna. I hope I really hope those aren't too close together. There's a lot of signatures gonna be in this one. But this shouldn't get too chunky. Because I'm gonna be painting more. This is gonna be more like an art journal dedicated to um, totems and animal messages. So yeah, I have, I've always believed in totems. Um, I figured out my first totem when I was a teenager. It actually wasn't my first totem, but it's the first totem that I realized, and my dad kind of helped that one out. And the lovely people of the internet. Um, my dad gave me the name Raven when I was a teenager, kind of like a coming of age thing. And uh, um, it really struck a chord with me. And um, a lot of my online names are still Raven something or other. Um, so yeah. Um, and then I noticed Raven's around a lot. I think he gave me the name when we were vacationing out west. I went to BC for the summer. We drove across Canada. It was super awesome. And um, yeah. I kind of went through like a gothy phase and stuff like that and was on different forms and my online names were always Raven something and somebody piped in, well maybe you have a Raven totem. Ravens are kind of, as a totem, or it's a good teaching totem but their lessons are kind of hard to understand. <laughs> so yeah. And then later on I noticed, I realized uh, when I was younger I had a wolf totem. And wolf totems are kind of very nurturing, and I was a very sad child. Um, as I was bullied pretty heavily, and my mom passed away when I was a little girl, and it was really hard for our family. My dad tried his very best. He worked night shift and raised me and my brother solo for a number of years. So yeah, sad child. So yeah, wolf totems are kind of nurturing, and depending on your belief system and what uh, Native American culture you might be of, um, you know, the thing is you have many totems over your life and they come and go as you need different guidance. So 
I have quite a few. And I've also noticed that, not necessarily a totem, but I'll get messages from animals. Like, you know, in one day I'll notice like three great horned owls driving down the highway, which is a little bit untypical even for Canada. So, and then I'll be like, hmm, this means something, and I'll go look up what totem, you know, like uh, owl totems would mean, and the, the, usually the message that they have is something that I need to pay attention to or change within myself. So it's pretty cool. So I wanted to make a book to keep track of all my findings of this. And if you don't think that I'm crazy, then awesome. Um, I think it's a really cool belief system or type of spirituality or even like a way, like a style of divination almost, like dreams. Like the, it's like decoding dreams, but with animals. And, you know, um, some people only see or get messages from their totems in their dreams. So if you ever have questions about that, you can just ask me. Um, I, I've, I've helped a lot of people discover what their totems are and guided them through that. So, all the holes are poking in, no raw edges. If I was being anal, I could... That is like the world's hardest eraser. <laughs> I can come and erase all the pencil marks. Well, I guess it'll be quickie quickie. So yeah, the holes aren't very even, evenly spaced. But once, once you get all the... I like using really fluffy string. Once you get it all bound up, it doesn't really show, except for the raw edges, which is why we poked it in. And if you made a mistake like I did the first few times and poked it out, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I could go and I could touch up those raw edges with paint or ink or just leave it to the overall junkiness. Alrighty. So, binding. Now everybody gets really intimidated by this. And um, I'm not the handiest person, and I'm the type of person who will make all the mistakes. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it's, it's really not that hard. And I'm probably not doing it right, but I do it in a way that works. And if it holds everything together, then you're all good. Um, I don't use any glue. I'm just going to go and do something like... See, there's a bigger gap between these ones, and some of my books are thicker than others. So that one's a thin book, a thin book, a thick book, a thick book, and a thick book. I think that'll be the order that I find them in. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, five, and six. So I'll be able to stick this in. Haha! -ha. Which is already hold to fit these, so it's awesome sauce. So. Um, the first book I bound, I actually made this kind of crazy tool <laughs> out of some crafting wire because I couldn't find a needle big enough to fit my thread through. And it worked! So I just did a bunch of back and forth, made a loop, twisted it together, and it worked. I bound three books with this sucker. <laughs> and then I eventually found some like upholstery uh, darning needles with like a huge, 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 huge... Um, huge eye, so that'll work. Uh, another trick that I do when I'm binding books with loose leaves, like just papers, um, like Sugar does, I usually grab a knitting needle, maybe not the big, big, big one, and um, I, I choose, I guess, maybe the second hole up, and I feed all the pages through this, and it just kind of aligns them all. Uh, the next time I do a book, bind a smaller book with loose leaves, I'll, I guess I'll do a tutorial on that. It just keeps, keeps everything together and keeps all the holes aligned and makes things a lot easier. So, I know, it's kind of abstract. So, <clears throat> some books I do, like, mixed, mixed fibers, like this one. Yes, you're going to see a lot of foxes. One of my one of my recent totems that I figured out in the past two or three years is a fox. So, all lots of foxes. And then some I did all the same fiber. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I really love this, and the colors all match. And this one's pretty cool, too. 
Um, maybe I'll alternate. I have, there's a reason why I have all this eyelash stuff. I was knitting tribbles. <laughs> play a prank on my boyfriend many many years ago. We've been together for nine years now. It's pretty crazy and awesome. Um, but yeah, when I first started dating, whenever he'd come over to visit, um, I would stick a triple in his computer bag. And I think I actually was able to get four in there before he started noticing there were triples. So it was uh, super super funny. So he, he has them all. And I should start knitting them again. It was fun. You just knit a square and sew it together and stuff it. And then a treble. So usually I do four. Oh, is it four or three lengths? I'm going to go with four just because I'm always worried I'm going to run out. And, you know, it's not hard to use. Use little scraps of really cute yarn. So. This is my front. You're going to have to open up your book to the middle. So I'll do this facing you guys more. I have to remember that you guys are on a tilt. So, open that up. We drove through New York State this summer on our way to Pittsburgh to do a... Uh, we went to Replay FX, which is a huge uh, retro... Uh, video game and pinball convention, which is super cool. Um, and one of the people, um, there's a sidebar, my boyfriend uh, used to be a video game programmer, and uh, he made a game. <laughs> um, so yeah, he made a game and uh, uh, he redid a retro game. Like he redid, he made new levels for Donkey Kong. So he's part of like the Donkey Kong competitive community, and one of the fellows that we met through the community, we met in person at the convention, and we we're supposed to go camping together, and he um, recommended that we go to Fingers Finger Lakes in New York, because um, he's he's from Pennsylvania, um, and we're from Southern Quebec, so kind of Adirondacks is kind of like halfway between us. So yeah. But I w ended up working full time the whole month of uh, September and the whole month of October, so we didn't get to go. So maybe next year. But I have other books on Figure Lakes, so <laughs> I grabbed all the tourism books when I was in New York, and yeah. So, um, right. How did I start this? I think. I start. start here, and then this is where I usually leave my dangly, yeah, I usually leave my dangly, and then, so yeah, start at the top, leave however much of a tail that you want to dangle off the side of your book, so usually I just leave it about the same length, because if it's too long I find it drives me batty, so yeah, about this, and then you just... Make sure you're doing it the right way. I tried to sew them in backwards. <laughs> and it's just sewing, but you're only doing like five stitches. And then you go down. And then you go down. And usually, yeah, the first one I hold this one. Let me pull that one tight. Right it through the next one, and then through the next hole. And it's really cool with like these notches. It just so you don't have to worry about it being super tight at first. We're gonna tighten it as we go. And this like this eyelash thread is like super stringy. So yeah, you're gonna have. Oh, it's fun using eyelash thread too. Like I get this little fringe down the center of my signature. And a signature is just a packet of bound pages within a book. That's all a signature is. So, you're binding books within a bigger book. <laughs> and what's cool about this is you're using pre-made books, so half the trouble's already... Like, you don't have to worry about pages going every which way. So, here's 
the last one. I'm sorry if I'm blocking your view. Just trying to get it in the hole is tricky. So. here. So now it's good to do a good tighten. And then now that you're at the end, we're just going to go back the other way. So here you see a section that doesn't have fringe, so we're going to come up and we're going to go in this hole and then back through that hole. So we're reverse Oops, making a mess. We're reverse doing the sewing back up. So we're coming out this hole here. So we can pull that nice and tight. So now, usually it's. <laughs> I don't think I needed four lengths. We'll see next time with three. So now I'm coming in this hole here. And just make sure that I'm going to get in this hole. And then I'm going to. Do, do, do. I hope I'm not making you all seasick. <laughs> Up into the middle. Line everything up and line all tangled. Okay. That's just the tail. You don't have to leave a tail if you don't want to. You need to leave a little bit so you can tie. So then I'm going to come back out here. Oh, I guess this is why I like having an odd number of holes. So I have one, two, three, four, five holes. If I have an odd number of holes, I round out, wind up, back out here. So I'll just tighten everything up. Goodness, I've got way more. Okay, so yeah, three lengths and you're fine. More than fine, probably. <laughs> so. And I come and I tie a knot, but I try to tie the knot towards the top, if that makes any sense. Again, you don't have to. I just like to have all my dangles starting there. <laughs> yeah. If you notice, I, like, I don't know if you can see, I still have all kinds of scars all over my body from the chicken pox. That's ink, but like all the other spots, some of them are freckles. The reddish looking ones, they're a uh, way too box. So now I'm just going to snip it here. And then we have a bound book. So this is too short to use again for uh, binding this purposes, but it's a nice long sheet. So we have our first signature in our book. How about that? And it's in there, good and solid. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest. I don't, I don't know. I guess I'll do one more with you guys, um, and then I'll go ahead and do the rest. So yeah, it's uh, it's fun. The, uh, I, I I haven't. I'm kind of the shy, quiet type, believe it or not. And you're probably all thinking, well, why the hell do you have a YouTube channel? Kind of, it's easier to talk to uh, my wall, which is you guys. <laughs> Um, like, I have an easier time when people come talk to me than me going to talk to people, if that makes any sense. I guess it has a lot to do with my social anxiety. So, yeah. Um, I want to have fun with this, and it gives me a way to be social and feel alright about it, <laughs> which is always a good thing. And, um, yeah. So, I don't know. Let me know. I know I'm not, you know, because it's like my third video. There's going to be like maybe two viewers if I'm lucky. But let me know what kind of stuff you want to see. Like, I can just leave this channel kind of free for all, crafting anything. Like, if you want to, like, I'm not a good sewer, but 
I could always bring you along while I sew something or try to sew something. It's really funny. I'm working on this really ancient sewing machine that is demon possessed. <laughs> and I yell at it sometimes in French. <laughs> um, oops. You know, it's a lot easier to do it when, with one string than two. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, do, I can, well, I also do, like, I do weddings and portraits and stuff, but, um, my hobby part, my art part, and the art that I am good at is doing, uh, landscape photography. And not only, like, nature, like, I love nature photography, but I also do, like, urban landscapes and stuff, and, uh, I could always have you guys along, or do Twitch, like, live Twitch. It's like now Twitch has Twitch Creative, which is pretty cool. Uh, do like editing sessions, and I can tell you about like I love talking about when I do fairs and stuff. I love talking about how I got a shot, or the circumstances why I took that shot, or even just like where I took the shot. Like some of the locations I go, canoe camping are just gorgeous. But I can do that too, or do videos. Um, so yeah, let, let me know, like flip-throughs. I, once I start getting better at this, I guess I would like to do swaps maybe. Um, anything to like, like get some supplies, like trade for supplies. Like I don't have punches, so like I, I'd love to trade. Like I don't know what, <laughs> I don't have much. Um, maybe, uh, oh yeah, somebody in a group, I, I posted it, I'll show you after I finish this. I, I bought, I'm doing an altered book journal. I, I'm still gluing and ripping pages. I didn't do an altered book, but I found this really beautiful book. But like the book was so, it's like the dictionary of French authors in French. And someone's like, oh my god, I like would love to find stuff with French written on it. And I'm like... If anybody wants stuff with French written on it, I can totally figure that out. Like, I'm ripping out all these pages from the book, and like, yeah, it's cool to keep some of them, but I'm, I don't need all of them. Um, and yeah, there's like French stuff everywhere. There's more French stuff here than English. Or bilingual. There's bilingual stuff too, like all our junk mail. Well, not all. Most of the junk mail's French. Oh, that looks so cool. Love it. I love the floof. I love the floof. I love soft things. I love texture. I like soft. Um, so yeah, I guess my wrist is a bit twingy. But I'm almost done. Yay! Thank you for bearing with me, guys. I don't know how much I'm going to edit it down. So there we have it, folks. The Monster Art Journal for Totems. Now I can go and like fix the pages that aren't quite glued together. I'm going to go in with some tacky glue. I didn't have tacky glue when I was gluing pages together. And I can finish gessoing. And, uh, yeah. But she's together. And eventually I'll start working on it. And uh, these pages are going to be planned out. And um, I, I, I want to do collage. Like, I'm practicing drawing animals now for when I get to this. I, I'm really crappy at drawing. Um... So part of me wants to do paintings, and part of me wants to do, like, collage. Um, so I, I'm not sure, but these pages will be planned out, so these will probably be good pages to film. And uh, it'll be really cool, because I can talk about um, about what the animal means as, as a totem and what it means to me. So that'll be pretty cool if you're into that. So thanks for joining in. Uh, my first tutorial. I hope it wasn't that terrible. Um, maybe I'll do a short version and the long version. So the version where you hear all my rambling and a version where it's just like to the point in the tutorial. Because they're probably going on like 40-50 minutes now. But yeah. Or maybe I'll do like a quickie tutorial with like a smaller book eventually. But there we go. There's a junk journal bound with uh, upcycled books. And uh, I hope you liked it. Thanks, guys. Bye.